Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon to you all our brothers and sisters. Ramadan Mubarak to, to all of you. <laughs> it's Ramadan Mubarak day, day 12. 12. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'm, I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I'm counting day by day. Yes, and if you're new to the channel, please don't mind to subscribe and mm. press that notification bell because we are uploading daily because it's Ramadan daily. Mm. Yeah, and uh, if you're new here, just know we are, we are constructing a masjid in Uganda and whoever is willing to contribute, the. the the details are in the description box on the GoFundMe account and the other details. We 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 have we want to pray for all those who are who have uh, fa who are fasting yeah. and all those who are ill. Mm. May Allah may Allah give you shifa. Amen, ya Rab. Today's video, we are going to be reacting on a video called the family, the family of, of Imran. Imran. The story of the story Zakaria, of Zakaria alayhi alayhi salam, salam, and Yahya alayhi alayhi salam. Salam. Yeah. Let's go straight to the video. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakaria alayhi salam, a great prophet and a messenger, he comes from the descendants of Dawood and Sulaiman alayhi salam. He was a prophet and at his time, the one who used to lead the prayers was a man very pious, what we would call today the Imam or the Shaykh. He was a very, very pious man known as Imran. Imran was related to Zakaria. Ali Imran, in which Imran was a righteous man and the prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to Bani Israel at that time, Zakaria. Zakaria was married to a Shia, the sister of Maryam. Their mother, her name is Hannah. So Imran was married to Hannah. Imran and Hannah had two girls. One, her name is Ashia, that was married to Zakaria alayhi salam. Another girl, her name is Maryam. And of course, there's a big age uh, gap between Ashia and Maryam. The majority of the scholars say that Maryam is the sister-in-law of Zakaria. So the wife of Zakaria, her name is Ashia. And Maryam is her sister. Some other scholars say that she is his niece because they say that Ashia actually is the sister of the mother of Maryam. So there is a bit of a difference of opinion here. But we know that they are relatives. Al Imran are from the descendants of Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, and Al Imran are the family of Sayyidina Isa salam, and that's the family of Zakaria salam, and the family of Yahya salam. They are from the same family the household of Al Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah chose Adam, Nuh, the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran above all people, offspring one of the other. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Maryam and Zakaria and Yahya and Isa and they all relate the story together. So Zakaria alayhi salam and Imran, the two of them were related in that way and they had a link and a connection. And one day, the wife of Imran, she used to pray. These were very pious people, very, very pious people. The wife of Imran, he, she, she used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never losing hope. It is reported that one day she saw a bird giving a little bit of food, bringing some food and flying in to feed the little chicklet. And when the bird put the food into the beak of its little baby, and the wind blew, it took its wing and it covered its own baby. And she felt the desire to have a child at that age. She said, Ya Allah, grant me a child. Ya Allah, we are serving you. This is my husband. He is leading the people in prayer and so on. Ya Allah, bless us with some goodness. And she continued praying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded her call. But she had made a promise. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Remember the time when the wife of Imran had conceived, she then made a pledge to us to say, Ya Allah, I am dedicating the child who is in my womb for your service completely. The child will not be doing anything else besides your service. Specifically, that means that this child will serve in the masjid. Which masjid? Al Masjid Al Aqsa. In that time, they used to have men. They were devoted to the serving of the masjid. 
the wife of Imran she was not thinking in terms of dunya at all she wanted her child to go to the service in the masjid al-aqsa when she delivered her child she said oh my lord i have given birth to a female child and females were not traditionally allowed to serve in the masjid it was only for men allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah knows better what she delivered and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and the male is not like the female what does this mean this means that whatever male you would have delivered that male will not be better than the female that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you because the female that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you is the best of the woman in the world she doesn't know but allah knows better all what she knows is that she delivered a female but allah knows who this female is and this female is maryam alayhi salam now what had happened there was a problem in that while she was pregnant the father passed away who was the father imran the sheikh the great sheikh he passed away when he passed away and the child was born an orphan so maryam was an orphan mary may peace be upon her there was a problem as she was born she wanted to fulfill the promise for the child there was a debate who should take care of this child so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you were not there when they had this debate and they drew lots as to who should look after this child maryam who should bring her up under whose care so the priests and the others the religious people and the pious they said no we all want each one was claiming the right let us draw lots what happened they took their pens each one took their pen and put their pen and they had a little child come to pick a pen and the child picked the pen of zakaria alayhi salam they said no we got to try again so they took their pens put it into a little wooden casket or like a pencil case sort of a thing and they said we're putting it in the stream any one of these pens that flow against the stream against the flow of the water that will be the person so only zakaria alayhi salam started flowing the other way the rest were going down there's a second sign they said no now let's do it for the last time if these whoever's flows with the stream will have the child now that didn't really make sense because all of them were supposed to flow so allah made it such that everyone else has flowed against the stream and this one flew flowed with it so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it was zakaria who took her and looked after her when they were quarreling who should take care of maryam brothers and sisters in islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for one man out of the whole family to take care of her which is Zakaria alayhi salam who was the prophet of the time you know what Zakaria used to do Zakaria used to be the imam of the house of Allah and he used to spend the majority of the time there and in order for him to take care of Maryam he had to place her with him all the time in the house of Allah. Now there was something strange. They had kept her as she was growing up in the room known as a mihrab is a little corner of worship. Every time Zakaria alayhi salam went there, she was engaged always in acts of worship in remembrance from a very, very young age. And she used to clean and she used to keep the place tidy. And she was a person who was dedicated for the service of this place of worship. Very, very pious woman, woman of the highest levels, but she was still a young girl. Every time Zakaria alayhi salam went, he would find something amazing. She had fruit that was not from the season they were in. So the fruit of summer was found with her in winter as fresh as ever. And the fruit in winter was found with her in summer as fresh as ever. And these are the things that were happening frequently. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whenever Zakaria would go and visit her, he would find with her risk. So it's not once or twice. It's many times, frequently, and she is there in the room, and this risk is coming to her. So Zakaria alayhi salam asked her, where is this risk coming from? He is wondering, who is bringing you this? I am the one who is taking care of you. And this is strange, because this fruit, it's impossible to have in Jerusalem in this time of the year. What was the response of Maryam alayhi salam? She said, this is from Allah. And then she told him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the ones he wants without any limits. 
she is giving him this wonderful lesson in rizq see what she said allah will give you without any limits allah gives sustenance to whomsoever he wishes without account allah doesn't take into account that it is summer and it is winter if he wants he can give you anything now these were miracles that were happening at the time so zakaria alayhi salam saw it he was the only one who noticed and he told himself subhanallah i want to draw an example here this is the qudra and the power of allah this little young girl is telling me allah can give whatever he wants i know that i'm a nabi but if allah can give off season fruit then surely i'm an old man i don't have any children i am equivalent to off season when it comes to children allah can give me children that's exactly what he thought he says my wife is barren she was barren she could not bear children but he says that would be equivalent to being off season but still allah can give her a child so he raised his hands allah says at that juncture zakaria raised his hands and he says oh allah grant me a pious offspring ya allah you are the one who can hear my prayer you are hearing me remember the mercy of allah upon his slave zakaria when he called out to his rabb he called out with humbleness humility silence and between him and allah he called out what did he say allahu akbar oh my rabb my bones are now weak my hair is gray but i will never lose hope in you i will continue praying to you my prayer will never be wasted zakaria alayhi salam being the nabi he was the one responsible for the religious affairs of bani israel Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salam when he became old he was worried that there is no one qualified to take over after him therefore he wanted to have a child that would be strong and capable to lead Bani Israel and to teach them and to bring them back to the straight path subhanallah he says oh allah grant me a child who will inherit me and he will be an heir of the family of Jacob ya allah i want a male child who can continue my lineage and this goodness and the family of jacob he can follow the footsteps of the prophet jacob may peace be upon him immediately the dua was accepted allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the angels called him when did they call him when he was standing and praying in al mihrab al mihrab is the place of worship it gives us the impression that sayyidina zakaria alayhi salam was constantly in a state of ibada so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says We called out to him, O Zakaria. We are giving you good news of a child that your wife shall conceive and bear, and we have named him Yahya or John in the English language. We have given him that name. Nobody before him has ever had that name. Allah says, and no one will be similar to him in certain qualities. So amazingly, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is speaking about Yahya. and allah named him look at this allah named him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this man he was thankful to allah he is thankful but at the same time he is shocked he wants confirmation ya allah how can i have a child now you've already given the name and everything ya allah how can i have this boy when my wife is barren and i am so old ya allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qala kadhalik Allahu Akbar Allah says that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In another place in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he told him that didn't we create you before this is how Allah creates Allah says be and it is Zakaria says oh Allah give me a sign when i see that sign i will know that now she has conceived Allah said your sign is that you shall not speak to mankind for 3 days except with signals so he speaks fine and then suddenly for 3 days he lost the ability to speak and he was only able to make dhikr of allah subhanahu wa taala so how can he communicate with people he communicate with them by signs and allah subhanahu wa taala told him during these 3 days remember your lord much and glorify him in the afternoon and in the morning the day came when he could not speak and he knew this is the sign of allah he got up and he is addressing people with signs and he is telling people to obey allah and so on so even though he was unable to speak he still was giving the people orders using signs sayyidina zakaria alayhi salam was not capable of speaking for 3 days that did not deter him 
from fulfilling his duties of dawa to his people this shows you the amazing devotion that the anbiya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had and days later the news was out subhanallah his wife was expecting and she gave birth subhanallah to this messenger a great messenger known as yahya alayhi salatu was salam now yahya alayhi salam was the nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was blessed with so many good qualities allah says we gave yahya the book and we told him hold fast to this torah the torah was given reiterated repeated to yahya alayhi salatu was salam it is reported that he had memorized it the torah sayyidina yahya alayhi salam never gave up this order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is that you should hold fast and strong to the religion yahya alayhi salam is young and he is going to be the nabi of bani israel bani israel who have been corrupt and when the stray and this young man will be responsible for this ummah for this nation therefore he must have that strength and confidence and power allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have given him the judgment and the understanding and the wisdom when he was young over and above that we gave him something else we made him so sympathetic to the others not only to mankind but even to the other creatures of allah he had such a deep love for not only human beings but all the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that was from a very young age he was different he was not like the other children who played and they lied and they joked he was always a serious child he was always interested in learning he used to read the torah he used to learn he used to sit in prayer he used to go to the place of worship and pray and so on and we also purified him in every way and at the same time we made him righteous and allah says and he was not disobedient in any way no was he from amongst the arrogant he was a beautiful child and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how a very very well respected person he did not marry he did not feel within himself the inclination to marry so he was a person who was dedicated completely to the religion and he was a prophet and he was from amongst the righteous look at allah praising the prophet yahya alayhi salatu was salam it is reported that later on when he used to call his people he spoke to them with so much goodness they loved him all of them loved him he used to make them cry they used to sit and listen to him and they used to cry tears used to roll down their eyes when they used to hear to yahya relate from the torah and they used to hear him reminding them of what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded yahya bin zakaria with five commandments to perform in himself and to command bani israel to perform it seems that he delayed conveying the message so he received the five commandments from allah and he didn't hasten in conveying them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to sayyidina isa alayhi salam that he either conveys them or you convey them so sayyidina isa alayhi salam went to sayyidina yahya alayhi salam and said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you five commandments you either convey them or i will convey them myself sayyidina yahya alayhi salam said O oh spirit of Allah I am afraid that if you convey them I will be punished or the earth would swallow me so he went forth and decided to convey the message Yahya alayhi salam gathered the children of Israel to Jerusalem and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says until the masjid was full Yahya alayhi salam John as John stands up in Jerusalem and he starts to give a speech and Jesus peace be upon him Isa alayhi salam is standing next to him so imagine the scene and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said everyone comes out to listen to Yahya and they fill their balconies and Yahya alayhi salam calls out to them with the commandments so he praised Allah and he thanked him and he said Allah has commanded me five things to perform myself and you should perform he said number 1 you worship Allah and you associate no gods besides him and the analogy of someone who is worshiping a god besides allah is like one of you who bought a slave and you paid for that with your money in gold or silver and then you told that slave to work for you so the slave would go and work and instead of giving you the harvest he would go and give it to someone else sayyidina yahya alayhi salam said who would accept that and then he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created you and the one who is giving you So you should worship no one but him. Number 2, I command you to pray. 
and then he said when you stand to pray don't turn your face around because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is facing you and as long as you are facing him allah will face you and as soon as you turn your face away allah will turn his face away from you and then he said i command you to fast and the analogy of that is like someone who is walking with a sack of musk and everyone is able to smell it and then he said the smell of the mouth of the person who is fasting is better in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of musk and then he said i command you to give sadaqa charity he said the analogy of that is like a man who was captured by the enemy and they tied his hands to his neck and he is helpless and they forwarded him to execution he is bargaining with them to release him and he is trying to ransom himself with money so he is giving the money he is giving the money he is giving the money until they release him the meaning of this analogy is that by giving sadaqa and continuously giving sadaqa we are ransoming ourselves from hellfire he says and allah command you to remember him he says for indeed the parable of one who remembers allah is like a man who's been chased down by his enemy. As he's cornered by his enemy, he finds this, this fortress that cannot be penetrated. And he jumps behind that fortress in which he protects himself from them until his enemy flees away from him out of despair. So he says, this is like a person when he remembers Allah, he does not protect himself from the shaitan except by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine this man is running away and the enemy is pursuing him and he finds this castle, the strong fort and he goes in and he closes the door and he is safe. And then Sayyidina Yahya says, and you are in the safest place from shaitan when you are remembering the name of Allah. These are the five commandments of Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam. Yahya alayhi salam calling his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminding them of Allah azza wa jal. And Yahya alayhi salam earned a lot of respect in the heart of his people. And Zakaria alayhi salam was the father of Yahya. So there were the two main leaders and the two main prophets and messengers, including Isa alayhi salam, in which people used to look up to and respect. And at that time, there was a tyrant ruler from Bani Israel. And that leader, that king, he fell in love with his niece. And his niece was an evil woman. And they say that she was also a prostitute. And when the king fell in love with her, she became also eager to become the queen. Now how is she going to get married to him when it's haram in their religion? So she sent for a fatwa to Yahya alayhi salam, asking him, is it permissible for her to get married to her uncle, which is the king? So obviously Yahya said, no, haram. And some narration says that fatwa was also sent to Zakaria alayhi salam. And he said also it's haram. And the narration says that one night she was with her uncle. And she started to play on her uncle, which is the king. And she tried to attract him. When he came near her, she said, no. It's haram because Yahya says no, it's haram. And what's the solution? She said, I would not let you go near me until you get me the head of Yahya as my dowry. So that king with that hyped up desire and arrogance and pride, he sent his troops out to Yahya alayhi salam and they went behind Yahya and they killed Yahya alayhi salam and chopped his head off and brought the head of Yahya on a golden plate to the niece of the king as a dowry. And who objected? Zakaria alayhi salam. The soldiers of the king were sent behind Zakaria alayhi salam to kill him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Zakaria in which a tree opened up for Zakaria when he was running in the jungle. He hid in that tree. So some of the scholars say it's weak narrations that Zakaria alayhi salam hid in the tree. And Iblis Lanatullah Ali grabbed the side of his cloth and left it out in the open that when the soldiers came, Iblis came in the form of a human being and he said, Can't you see the garment? Get a saw and cut this tree open. And that's when you kill Zakaria alayhi salam. So Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam held strong to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a life of struggle, a life of striving, a difficult life. 
but sayyidina yahya alayhi salam was able to hold throughout that period with patience until he faced allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a shaheed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and peace be on him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he will be raised up again he's around dalika isa ibn maryam that's isa ibn maryam inshallah we have an appointment with that until we meet again وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان الله اه this is so touching i don't know but don't one know. one thing um i've i've learned or one thing i've confirmed that when allah says yes to something no matter the situation yeah. no matter the hate mm. no matter all the doors like uh, at times you like you feel that, like all the doors are closed yeah. for you mm. allah will always find that small door for you subhanallah i can't believe I believe this that's how this, uh, dua we, that's why we have to make dua yes. every now and then not to yeah. give to give up on hope uh, for example mm. if you you're like in your 40s and you don't mm. have a child yet don't give up you don't have a husband yet don't give up mm. you're like uh, in your you, you're supposed to be working maybe you've stayed jobless for i don't know how many years don't give up mm. anything you've like take along without having and you, you, you like it is so essential in your life mm -hmm. never give up let us always continue to ask allah allah is always listening yeah. and he always uh, answer our nothing prayers. is impossible in front Ex of allah exactly mm. <sighs> without being said if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel please press that notification bell and mm -hmm. See you in the next one, inshallah, Ramadan day 12, 13. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.